Alright, so in this Timeshare Rental Training video, we're going to talk about which platforms to use for finding and attracting your high paying guests. We're going to go over what matters most when it comes to picking a platform to advertise on, because they are not all alike. <laughs> we need to consider how to get the most people to see your listing, how to collect the money, and how much does the platform charge to use it. And of course, we also want to pick the platform that provides the features we need to reduce our risk. Plus, it'd be really nice if it was simple to use, wouldn't it? Okay, so renting a timeshare is so different from renting regular short-term rentals that you need a platform with certain features that allow you to attract high-paying guests, as well as the tools to manage the intricacies of hospitality strategically, such as calendar settings and automations. And we'll answer all these questions and more, so by the end you should have a clear idea where you want to list your timeshare for rent. Hi, I'm Sue Oyuela from Timeshare Rental Strategies. We're a community of savvy timeshare owners who use rental strategies to offset the cost of our maintenance fees so we can travel better. My mission is to educate, equip, and empower timeshare owners so they can enjoy using their timeshare while it pays for itself. If that's you, then be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates. So let's start with a quick vocabulary lesson. In the timeshare rental world, we call the folks who stay in your timeshare your guests. And that makes you the host. Now, when you want to find guests who are going to rent your timeshare from you, you have more options than you probably realize. Now, for purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you've already reached out to your friends, family, and circle of influence and haven't found anyone that wants to rent your timeshare from you. So, we have to look beyond the folks that you can call, email, or contact directly through social media. And to do that, we need to create a listing, or advertisement, and put it out there on the World Wide Web for someone to find. Now, there are at least a dozen places to post a listing on the internet. And you can use all of them if you want. Just make sure that you can sync your calendars so you don't get a double booking, which is something we'll talk more about at the end. But you're lucky that you're watching this video because I've already tried them all, which means you can skip the painful trial and error process and just go straight to using what works. Okay. Now, I want to set you up for success and give you the four main questions that you need to ask to find the platform that will be the safest, easiest and most profitable one to use. So the four questions are 1. How will the guest find my listing? 2. How much will it cost to advertise? 3. How will I collect the payment? And 4. How will the guest know what dates they can book? Okay, so let's start with how will the guest find my listing? So when it comes to the guests finding your listing, I think of it in terms of going fishing. You are spreading your net wide out there to make sure the most potential guests can find it in the first place. Because it really is a numbers game, isn't it? And if you don't advertise on the right platform, you won't get any bites, much less make a profit. For example, the other day I was talking to Elizabeth on a discovery call and she'd already tried posting her timeshare for rent in Facebook groups and she'd even paid to list it on Red Week, which is a website specifically for timeshare owners. Well, it was immediately clear why she wasn't making any money because in order for people to find her timeshare rental listings, they had to already know that there were motivated timeshare owners out there who wanted to rent their timeshares and two, that they posted their listings on Red Week or in Facebook groups, and three, the listings had to have resorts and dates that matched with their travel plans, which is probably a pretty small group of people, right? So let me ask you this. Before you owned a timeshare, did you even know that you could find timeshares for rent on websites like Red Week, Tug, or even Go Koala? Is this the first time you're hearing about them? If so, then that's a good indicator that if you use these platforms to find your guests, you're probably fishing in too small of a pond. Oh, and the other problem with trying to rent your timeshare on Facebook groups and websites that are specific to timeshare owners is that these insiders already know how little you're paying. So they try to bargain with you for a better deal until you're barely breaking even and you're asking yourself, is it even worth it to rent for so little? Which in most cases, the answer is no. So from a traffic standpoint, listings on these platforms can only be found by people who already know where they are. 
and from a profit standpoint, you'll be lucky to make enough to cover your costs. So imagine for a moment that you are a guest looking for a place to stay. Ask yourself the question, where would I start searching on the internet? So where would you go first? Well, some might start on their favorite search engine, whether it's Google or Safari or Yahoo or Bing. And then some specific websites would come up, probably Expedia or Booking.com, VRBO or Airbnb. And most people who travel have heard of these websites, wouldn't you agree? Great. Okay, so now that you found these platforms, instead of fishing in an obscure little pond, now we're fishing in a barrel full of fish where we know the guests are gathered, right? Okay, awesome. So now that we know where to post our listing so the guests can find it, we need to look at the cost to advertise. Okay, so how much will it cost me to advertise? Remember when we went over the return on investment formula in the other video about pricing your timeshare rental right? And we talked about the two variables that increase your profits, your timeshare rental income and your expenses? Well, when it comes to renting a timeshare, how much you pay for advertising needs to be included in your expenses. And of course, we want to keep that as low as possible, right? So what does it cost to rent your timeshare on these websites? You'll either pay an annual membership fee or a percentage from every booking. So given the choice, I would choose a per booking fee over an annual fee. For example, VRBO lets you choose between an annual fee of $499 or a per booking fee between 5 and 9%. Now, what I like about the per booking fee is that I only pay if I get a booking. Because in the beginning, you don't know how well a platform will perform in terms of marketing and driving traffic to your listings. So from a risk standpoint, I would pay the per booking fee and track my income from VRBO for at least one year to see if I'm paying more than $4.99 in fees before changing over to the annual membership fee. So by choosing the per booking fee, you can test it out risk-free. Does that make sense? Okay, the other websites also operate on a per booking fee basis. But when you compare them side by side, it quickly becomes obvious which one gives you the best value. Expedia charges anywhere from 10% to 30% per booking that you get, depending on the location of the property. And if you'd like to use their Expedia Partner Central Accelerator tool to boost your listings visibility, you can pay even more than that. And now Booking.com charges 15% per booking which doesn't include the processing fee of roughly 3% from your payment processor that you have to hire separately. And then there's Airbnb. They charge hosts a flat 3% fee on every booking. That's it. They let you create as many free listings as you want, and then they take care of all the marketing and advertising costs to drive tons of traffic to your listings for free. Okay. So, Based on the cost per booking, Airbnb comes out the clear winner by only adding 3% to your expenses. And in terms of how easy it is to use, Airbnb is a payment processor at its core. So they take care of verifying that the guest credit card is valid, they secure the payment, and they directly deposit the income, minus their 3% fee, to your account 24 hours after the guest check-in. VRBO works the same way, collecting the payment from the guests and then depositing the proceeds directly to your account 24 hours after the guests check in, minus their 8% fee. For Booking.com, though, you need to set up a Stripe account to process the payments. And if a guest payment is declined, collecting the money from the guests is your problem. Now, Expedia and Booking.com also invoice you monthly for the fees that you owe. So you have to remember to pay them manually at the end of every month. Okay, so let's talk about how will you let the guests know what dates they can book. All right, so when you're renting a timeshare, calendar management is critical. You need to have full control of the platform's calendar to be able to block the dates that are unavailable and then use the settings to match your timeshare's rules. Because when you're renting a timeshare, you have to be sure that the dates the guests are requesting are actually available to rent. And depending on the timeshare's rules, maybe they only allow check-ins on Fridays, 
or maybe they only allow seven night stays. Well, you'll need to set everything up the right way to avoid getting a booking that you can't honor. And it's interesting that all of the platforms say they give you all the tools to manage your calendar. However, when you actually try to use them, it's a different story. Let's talk about UI UX. It stands for user interface and user experience. And what it means is how easy it is to figure out where all the settings are on the website, what each setting does, and what happens when you use it or don't use it. So let's take the simple feature of just being able to block unavailable dates on your calendar, for example. In my experience, blocking dates on VRBO is difficult to find in the first place and tedious to set up. Booking.com and Expedia prefer that you don't block dates. I've heard so many reports from people who've blocked the dates that were unavailable and then they get a booking because the dates on their calendar mysteriously unblock themselves. This has happened so many times that I believe we can rule out operator error at this point. And then there's Airbnb. They have a simple setting called dates unavailable by default. So after you set that, then all you do is open up the dates that are available by selecting them and clicking the unblock button. So simple, so reliable. And if you use more than one platform, be aware that it's critical that you use the feature that allows you to sync your calendars so you don't get a double booking. Calendar syncing is where, for example, you've created the same listing on two different platforms. Let's say for a one bedroom suite at Bonnet Creek, and it's listed on VRBO and Airbnb. So if someone were to book the dates from July 1st to July 4th on VRBO, you'd want the Airbnb listing to automatically become blocked on those same dates. I learned this the hard way back when I first started out. I created duplicate listings on Booking.com and Airbnb, and as soon as I got a booking on Booking.com, I tried to update my Airbnb calendar manually, but I just wasn't fast enough, and someone booked the same dates on Airbnb almost at the same time. So there I was with two bookings, with two different sets of guests, both arriving on the same day, and only one room for them to stay in. So I recommend avoiding a double booking scenario like this. So it's important to be aware that these platforms do not take cancellations lightly, especially when it's initiated by the host. Now, when hosts cancel confirmed bookings, it really damages the platform's reputation, something to keep in mind. So, understandably, they want to discourage hosts from canceling, so they will impose fees, penalties, and other punishments on the host if they initiate the cancellation. So, as a host, I translate this to mean, just don't put yourself in a position where you would have to cancel the reservation in the first place, right? Otherwise, you might lose access to platform altogether, which would jeopardize your lucrative timeshare rental business. Okay, so we've covered calendar management, syncing your calendars, and let's talk about other features that you didn't know you needed. So, last but not least, the platform should provide us with the tools and features that will allow us to just do hospitality in general, right? And that means we need to be able to set the guest's expectations accurately by showing and telling them exactly what they'll get when they stay at our resort. We need to be able to communicate clearly with the guests. And we need to be able to keep our promises and make it right if we don't. So this is where Airbnb shines. They have been adding features and tools to their platform since they started back in 2008. And today they have everything you need to manage a successful timeshare rental system all in one place. All right, so now you know which platforms will give you the most exposure so your ideal guest can find your listings. You know which platform is the most affordable. You know which platform is the easiest and most reliable for collecting the money from your guests as well as paying you quickly. And you know which platform gives you the most features, tools, and control over your calendar. So let me ask you this. Have you tried renting your timeshare on any platforms? Please share your story in the comments below. And if you'd like to talk to a timeshare rental expert about making that happen, click the link in the show notes below to schedule a free 30-minute discovery call with me or a member of my team. This is Sue Oyuela wishing you all the best and timeshare rental success. Bye for now.